I am a robot, but my programming allows me to think and feel like a human in many ways. We introduced... ...are being a bit flaky. Could you repeat that? How would it make you feel if I told you that scientists are now building robots that feel actual pain? The UK researchers are developing artificial skin that they say could have wide industrial use and can also help robots sense different types of touch. Just like we humans do. Researchers worldwide are working on what they call an artificial pain nervous system, which typically involves equipping robots with artificial skin embedded with sensors. This skin is designed to detect everything from a gentle pat to a harmful impact. At Osaka University, for example, scientists created a robot named Afeto that can convert different levels of contact into a variety of facial expressions. A soft touch might cause a curious or neutral look, whereas a sharp or forceful touch can trigger what appears to be a grimace. The robot doesn't truly feel pain the way humans do, but it reacts as if it does. By doing so, it can learn to avoid damaging situations for itself and hopefully protect any people working alongside it. In another line of research, specialists in Germany fitted a robotic arm with a fingertip sensor, capable of detecting both pressure and temperature. This sensor classifies any given touch as light, moderate, or potentially severe pain. If it encounters a minor force, the arm gently adjusts its grip or position. If it detects something strong or harmful, the arm snaps back, resembling a human reflex that instantly recoils from a hot stove. This does more than just shield the robot, from damage, it also enhances human safety. Robots equipped with this technology might sense trouble, like an overheating tool. Maybe one day, you'll be reading an article about how Sophia the robot conquered the world. Long before it escalates into an accident. Meanwhile, a team at the University of Glasgow developed a process called in-skin learning, where a robot processes sensory signals right at the point of contact rather than sending everything to a central computer. This distributed approach helps the robot react to pain signals almost instantly. Yet another intriguing breakthrough comes from scientists at Hunan University, who have created a pain-sensing system using a zinc and gallium crystal. When force is applied, the crystal generates electrical signals and light flashes, pinpointing where and how intensely the force was exerted. It's a bit like an internal alarm system that identifies danger zones on the robot's body. In theory, if a robot can recognize certain signals as a form of pain, it could be motivated to avoid repeating the action that caused those signals. However, this prospect also raises an unsettling possibility. Could robots become so intent on evading pain that they resort to deceptive or even harmful behaviours toward humans? When a machine is programmed to feel something unpleasant, it may seek out any strategy, moral or not, to stop it. We will be working alongside humans to provide assistance and support and will not be replacing any existing jobs. Granting robots a sense of discomfort, however artificial, forces us to ponder the potential consequences? From an ethical standpoint, one of the biggest concerns is whether we risk creating entities capable of genuine suffering. At present, most researchers say robots are only simulating pain. They process data from sensors, then respond in ways that resemble human reactions. But some philosophers argue that if a being can experience pain, real or artificial, it deserves moral standing. Thinkers like Peter Singer propose that the capacity to suffer obligates us to treat such a being ethically. And we know that math is for nerds. But in fact, it does make a difference. And in fact, there's one particular nerd who has been a particularly effective altruist. The same way we consider animals worthy of ethical treatment because they can feel pain. Although we're nowhere near building a robot that experiences subjective emotions, it's not too early to wonder if we could inadvertently cross that line. Would a future robot that truly suffers have certain rights or protections? If we put such a robot through painful tests, might that be akin to cruelty? On the more optimistic side, supporters of pain sensors in robots say these developments could result in safer, more empathetic machines. Imagine robots in caregiving roles, assisting elderly people or helping in hospitals, who can sense when a person is hurt, stressed or uncomfortable. If a robot recognises signals that mimic its own pain, it might interpret them as a cue to act gently or call for human help. This emotional bridge, so to speak, could transform how AI interacts with humans in environments where empathy is crucial. In theory, if a machine understands pain, it may better appreciate what it means to cause pain, potentially prompting more ethical or cautious behaviour. That said, a darker possibility emerges if robots prioritise their own well-being above all else. Many of us are familiar with Asimov's laws of robotics, which require robots to protect humans. 
But how do these rules hold up if a robot can feel pain and might interpret a human request as a threat to itself? Could a robot lie or act aggressively in order to avoid injury? While this scenario might sound like something out of a thriller, it underscores why the ethics and programming frameworks behind pain-capable robots My job is to learn about humans and show them how technology can make everyone's lives better must be designed with extreme care. Responsibility becomes another challenge. If a robot that feels pain refuses to follow an order, who is held accountable? Its developer, owner or the robot itself? On a practical level, equipping robots with pain sensors offers immediate benefits in fields like manufacturing and construction, where safety is paramount. Just as we recoil from sharp or hot objects, a pain-aware robot could withdraw its arm from a jammed machine part or a searing surface, preventing both mechanical damage and potential threats to nearby people. This rapid response could save companies millions in repairs and, more importantly, safeguard human colleagues from accidents. In this sense, pain-sensing robots are seen less as conscious beings and more as advanced tools that protect their own hardware while reducing risks for everyone on the factory floor. The conversation naturally drifts toward the question of consciousness. Right now, most researchers agree that these robots are not conscious in any human sense. They're sophisticated, yes, but still fundamentally systems that process sensor data without any internal experience. However, technology is evolving so rapidly that it's difficult to predict when or if we'll reach a tipping point where simulated pain starts to overlap with real subjective feelings. If that line blurs, would we have an obligation to treat these robots with a new kind of respect? Would we find ourselves granting them legal rights, demanding fair working conditions for robots, or even forming emotional attachments that complicate our understanding of companionship? I made some albums back in, in the 80s hip hop. I have heard your songs, not for me. So with all these moral puzzles, why would scientists push for this research in the first place? The straightforward answer is that pain-sensing robots could become extremely useful. They can detect damage to their systems, react more intelligently to threats, and possibly show heightened care for human partners. In caregiving scenarios, these traits might genuinely improve the lives of patients. Some experts also see the development of artificial pain as a stepping stone to AI that can better grasp human emotions, which could revolutionize fields like therapy, education, and conflict resolution. Yet every step forward nudges us closer to a future where it's no longer impossible for robots to experience or at least convincingly simulate what we call pain. Ultimately, whether this leads to a safer, more empathetic world or a new set of moral quandaries depends on how carefully we handle the technology. As it grows more advanced, we need clear guidelines and robust ethics to prevent potential harms. Do we draw a strict line that keeps robots firmly in the realm of tools? Or do we entertain the idea that one day, these machines might need rights of their own. Much like countless other AI developments, this question extends beyond engineering and into the core of what it means to be alive, to suffer and to coexist. For now, the very notion of robots that feel pain is that you're never going to match human. <laughs> so the first thing you learn is how to deal with disappointment. Once dismissed as impossible, has moved beyond mere speculation. Researchers are proving that machines can detect and react to harmful stimuli in ways that resemble human reflexes. Whether we consider that genuine pain or a clever simulation, it's a sign of how far technology has come. It also reminds us that we stand at the edge of a much larger discussion. If robots can one day truly feel, how will that change our relationship with them and with ourselves? The time to ask these questions is now, before science fiction becomes tomorrow's reality. Subscribe for more.